Welcome everybody. This is Mike Mother of Foot Traders Hideout. We're going to get started in just a minute. Let some people get here from uh, YouTube and Twitter, Google Plus, so on and so forth. Okay, I've been asked for a long time to do this uh, video series and it took me a while to gather all the information and um, <clears throat> to, uh, to make sure that I'm very careful on how I present the information um, as well as um, the way that I will deliver the information. This is probably by far the most um, revealing look at the forex industry you will probably ever hear. Uh, a little bit of a background about me. I've been trading since uh, 1988 and for forex, in the forex I've been oof, for over 10 years actually. And um, I also do a lot of consulting for brokers, some very large brokerage firms. So I understand how things work on the inside. This industry is simply, simply put, um, again, I'm very careful on how I say things. They're simply hungry for money. That's a nice way of saying it. They're very hungry for money. The rest you could figure out for yourself. What I'm about to share with you in this five-part series is how the Forex industry actually works, the internals of it, some of the thinking behind uh, brokerages and platforms, uh, and actually how the traders uh, contribute to this fiasco. Um, so this five part series is going to be every time I'm going to drip another part. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a very controversial video, especially from brokers and platforms. But I think that the word needs to be out there for the average trader. Um, so not only am I a trader, obviously the platform that I created here for myself and I'm sharing with people that you can download for absolutely free is because I was sick and tired of the games that brokers play and the platforms that's out there. So um, we're going to cover uh, the games that the brokers play, the actual platforms that guarantee your losses pretty much in most cases. Um, the issues that trader never learns and why over 80% of traders lose money. The wrong tools for success, signals, robots, technical analysis, so on and so forth, we'll touch on those. There's going to be other videos on technical analysis and things like that. I, I will probably touch a little bit on it uh, today. And how you can actually make money with Forex. So obviously I've been I've been doing this for a while. That's all I do, aside from you know writing my own software and uh, the platform. So obviously there's money to be made, but you just need to know how, what, where, and who, right? So those are the most important parts. Otherwise you just won't have that ability. To to say it in short the traders in Forex and the stock market are on the short end of the stick. So we need to make sure that you first understand what the issues are, what the problems are, and then we can address them and see what could be done 
uh, to make things go your way. And I will show you things uh, in this platform that um, sort of are non-standard and are overlooked by, by a lot of traders or they may not see the actual reasoning behind it. There's a lot of logic that goes into uh, the Forex industry. There is um, strategists, there is money gurus, and like I said, it's a very money hungry industry. So they will try to uh, take your money in a nice way. So today we're going to look at the games that the brokers play and um, how it affects you. Okay, so let's get started. Well, today we're going to talk about the games that the brokers play, part one. Um, first, we're going to talk about the social trap. There's a big thing going on in the past two years, three years even, uh, that with the buzzwords of social trading. So you'll see a whole bunch of trades that people make, uh, supposedly, and that's what they're trading. So you can copy them, you can follow them, you can talk to them, you can chat with them, you could friend them, whatever. We're going to talk about this trap, okay, and notice it's in capitals. We're going to talk about hedging and cancellation of orders and how brokers make money over 80% of the time on your money. Uh, we're going to talk about rate change delays. We're going to talk about execution delays, um, usually on the exits and not on the entry. And we're going to talk about the trap of amazing low spreads and what you really pay is more. Uh, we're going to talk about demo mode versus real trading and bad order entry screens, lack of options, and protective defaults. So we're going to talk about all this, um, all this information. This is, again, by far probably the most revealing uh, video series you're going to see. Uh, on the forex industry anywhere most people either uh, they're inside and they won't talk about it or most people just don't know okay so let's uh, let's talk about the social trap social trap we're gonna start by I'm gonna I'm gonna take um, the large brokers into into this picture we'll bring them in bloggers are usually employees or bloggers from the outside or people that are getting paid to converse in chats with carefully crafted texts okay so they have scripts they have a certain framework that they work with now brokers make money on the trades that you make because it's based on spreads right so obviously they want to make sure that you create more trades so uh, also times also at times it offsets they're losing in-house trades and we're going to talk about some of the the ways that the brokers work with the money okay so what happens is you normally deposit a bunch of money into your uh, trading account okay and it's sitting in a in, in the broker's account so they have a pool of money okay now they also get a whole slew of trades from the traders and they need to manage them so we'll take a look at how they manage that so trades are offset by in-house hedging and cancellation we'll discuss that in a bit the more trade volume the more likely the in-house hedging applies so that means that um, if they have a hundred users uh, versus 50,000 users chances are they have more hedging that goes on in-house because chances are more people are trading any particular uh, symbol or, or uh, currency pairs okay promote trading competitions on real accounts with prizes and most of the time it's to fake users or users who are actually employees or um, the, those bloggers okay usually um, the prize winners turn out to be automated fake accounts or employees and how do, how do we know that is because if you follow them you will notice they will never ever respond or um, 
the way that uh, their trades are made are inconsistent with what a trader would do. For example, if somebody trades the euro dollar all the time and that's all they do, uh, in competitions all of a sudden you're going to see them uh, trading uh, kiwis, yens and things like that when, when they have never done that you can see inconsistency that is not what the trader does so there's all these red flags that you can read between the lines and, and see what's going on um, those bloggers and employees they promote following users who have no clue how to trade um, or they've had a great run for a week or a few days or whatever but you know, knowing how to trade is not just getting the wins. Most people say, oh, this guy made 200%. The numbers are actually skewed. And this is the other thing. The, the, um, the performance numbers are intentionally mis misrepresented. The win-lose ratios, uh, some, sometimes the deposits are counted as profits. For example, if there's a competition and you start with a thousand dollars and say that you lost um, 50 percent of that during the competition but then you deposit another thousand dollars you're actually with 50 percent um, uh, profit that's just how it's counted and it's wrong it's completely wrong so you need to take a look at that because what happens is they take a look at the account at the beginning of the the um, the competition and what's the what's the balance at the end of the competition but they forgot to take out all the deposits so that part sometimes gets in um, also the profit loss is gross without the spreads and the carryover charges for the weekends so the numbers are skewed so this brings a, this this brings up an interesting issue Have you ever noticed that most chats are filled with garbage and useless information? You can just hear all the blunder. Oh, look, this is going up. This is going down. And, you know, things that just don't make sense. There's just too much noise. In chat, signals have no backings and no setup for information. And I'll discuss this later. But uh, basically, what is, oh, I, I got in. Well, what's your exit? I, I don't have one. I just bought it. Okay, that is not a signal. A signal should have take profit, stop loss, fall back. Um, it should have all these exit points, checkpoints, uh, pivots. That's a true signal. Okay, most of the signals out there on the web are complete garbage. Okay, most of the time you don't even know the time frame of the signal. We'll talk about those. That's a separate. It's a separate video, but we do talk about signal carriers, where they have a big part in this industry. Most of them will give you a signal that you don't know whether it's a swing trade or maybe it's a scalp. You just don't know. They won't tell you the targets on most of the time. Hedging and cancellations of orders. How the brokers actually make money over eighty percent of the time. Now this is really interesting because if you understand this issue. If you understand how this industry works, you know you'll understand why I really got pissed off at, at at this whole industry, and I created my own platform. It's these next next few um, uh, sections that we're going to talk about: the cancellation or internal hedge. Now, brokers make money every time you trade, even if it's done by the broker level. So, for example, if one trader buys and the other sells, both orders are filled in-house. So, if you buy uh, 1,000 units of euro dollars and I sell 1,000 units of euro dollars, well, nothing ever happens because both trades canceled in-house, okay, or they hedged in-house. So, they got the spreads from both trades at the same time. That's, that's pretty important stuff. So as long as the risk is low, the orders are kept in-house and are never passed to the banks for the actual clearing. 
Now, the broker will wait until the opposite order is placed the other way most of the time. So that means, say, for example, you buy 1,000 units of euro dollar, okay, but I haven't, I haven't sold mine yet. They will wait because, and again, the more, the more users they have, the more traders that they have, the longer they can wait, but chances are they won't wait that long. So if uh, a big broker has, uh, some of the big brokers have 100 or 150,000 traders. So chances are things are gonna get filled fairly quickly. So even if somebody has a big order, chances are it's gonna get canceled in house because someone is going to create an order the other way. Now, once it goes uh, beyond certain levels, then the brokers will have to go to the banks and create those orders. Now, the opposite trade hedge, think of it this way. If a broker thinks the rate will go the other direction, a hedge trade will be made. So not only will you lose money, they will actually, their trade will win. So the broker places an actual trade against yours winning twice. Why is it twice? Because on their trade, they will make money. And on your trade, it was never passed to the bank. So they made the complete amount. So your trade loss, so the broker keeps the money plus their winning trade. Okay. Now, hedging, external hedge, what does that mean? If the trade went to the bank and it's losing money, well, what happens then? The broker places an actual trade against yours to further the losses, okay? Any further loss, the, any further losses to yours, they'll start making money and then they close their trade, okay? So basically what happens is, um, say that you bought 1,000 units of euro dollars, okay? And they passed it to the bank for some reason. And it gets to a certain level to a certain level where it needs to retrace, but you're already so far down, the chances are it's going to close, it's going to be close to close. They'll start a hedge against your trade. And so they will make money when it comes back, okay? That's the actual external hedge where they hedge it against on the bank level. So they'll actually put two orders out, one yours and one of theirs. Okay, rate change delays. Now this is really important stuff. Okay, most brokers delay quotes. Here's how they safeguard it and what you should know. Look in the terms of service. If you see any of these, chances are that the quotes may get delayed. No arbitrage allowed. Okay, arbitrage trading is the difference between two separate platforms. So for example, if you were to take the traders out at platform, Okay, let's bring this up right now. We'll take that for as an example. Okay, if we were to take a look right now at the, at the euro dollar, we're one point one point two five oh nine five. Okay, one point. Let's say one point two five oh nine. Okay, and all of a sudden there's a big jump. Now the other brokers may not bring the uh, the new rate as fast as you would see here. Okay, now what what that would mean is that since you see things going up at this end you would actually create a buy at the other broker, okay? And that is arbitrage, okay? Uh, and, and it goes the other way, you can, you can sell it, okay? So if, if they tell you no arbitrage allowed, no scalping allowed, obviously you're gonna be doing the same thing, right? And no hedging, okay? Meaning that on one of them, you're actually going to buy and the other one you're going to sell, and then you're gonna make money possibly on two platforms. Okay. Aside from U.S. citizens, which are not allowed to hedge anyways due to the NFA, the National Futures Association, um, most platforms will not allow you to hedge. Most platforms will not uh, allow U.S. traders anyways. Um, only some of the big, big brokers have uh, U.S. citizens, uh, U.S. traders allowed. Okay. Um, but because the software is very limited uh, in terms of uh, the NFA regulations. The Traders Hideout platform is um, NFA. Um, uh, it, it does take all the NFA regulations into account. You cannot hedge. You cannot do um, uh, multi 
uh, multi-exits if you are US traders. So all those things are taken into account. But that, that is one way that you can know if the quotes are delayed. If you see that there's no arbitrage or no, no scalping allowed, then chances are they're doing delays. And if you try to do scalping, they will actually just cancel that uh, trade or they might even freeze your account. Okay, so if you violate the terms of service, okay, your winning trades will usually get canceled, almost always, and the account is paused for review and all the open trades can be controlled, which is really bad. Okay, that is a big thing because you might have actually winning trades that you might want to uh, close, but you can't because your account is paused or frozen. So that that's uh, that's a big thing that you know you just you're going to be losing more than what you bargained for. So check your broker. If you're not using the Traders Hut Up platform, here's how you check it. During the high volatility, so for example, on oil and gold and silver and even on the euro dollar when there's a big, big move, okay, simply look at the difference between the rate of change, the delta. So if the broker's rates are lagging the THP rates, the broker is manipulating the rates. That's the bottom line. Okay. Now, one thing to remember, during the high volatility, for example, if there's a news release or something happened, like a, a big tsunami or something, delays are 5 to, well, 15 seconds is already high. But 5 to 10 seconds, it's okay. It's normal, but not more. Okay, 15 is actually pushing it. Um, some brokers, you might even see 30 seconds until it catches on. So that's when you know that they do all the all the um, the delays, and it generally means that they they're doing the order cancellations, which we talked about. They're actually doing the hedging and the cancellations that we talked about on here. Okay, so that's something you should watch out for if you're not using the Traders Hideout platform. Number four, execution delays. Now it's usually on exits. So. Here's how it works. If you place your entry and exit, the brokers will play the pips game. What happens is the broker waits for the rate change, whether the spread will be higher than the actually that's quoted. Okay. And this is normally done on the exits. So you will notice that the exits will take longer. Okay. Now, obviously, it does make sense that um, exits and entries will take the same time. Okay, now from a computing standpoint, okay, I should know because I got third degree in, in computer science. I got my PhD in computer science. So from a computing standpoint, it takes nearly the same time to open and close a trade. Okay, but most platforms, what you will see is that it will take longer to exit than it would to enter. Okay, so that is uh, generally when you know that uh, a broker is playing the pip game, trying to squeeze out another pip, another pip when you when you exit, and we'll see that in a second when we talk about another another game that they play, which is right here, the trap of amazing low spreads. What you really pay is more. Okay, you you might see sometimes brokers show 0.1 to 0.9 pips for a currency trade, for example, on the euro dollar. You're going to see, oh, we have uh, an average of 0.2 or 0.5 pips. Well. That's completely complete hogwash. It's impossible. Here's why: most exchanging banks will charge at least one to 1.5 pips for euro dollar. I can tell you that some of the leading brokers that have huge, huge volumes, okay, they get at 1.2 pips. Okay, and I'm talking massive, massive brokers. It's probably the, the first or second largest broker in the world in terms of volume. So they got some of the best rates from the banks. And if you see something like this, this means that they're doing everything that we've talked about until now. They're doing the cancellation. They're doing the internal hedging, the external hedging, all the games. They're, they're doing those. So stay away from those kind of brokers. Okay, Really, really important. It's a sign that a broker plays with the extra pips also on the entries and on the exits. Now, the execution rates are not the same as the quoted entry or exit rates. Now, it's also a sign that the broker does the inside pooling, in-house pooling, or trade cancellations that we talked about. The trades, well, they're fake, okay? And they're not really, uh, your trade is not trading for real. So. 
Um, basically, the broker cancels the trade with an op opposite self-trade if they need to, or they ensure that the trade is against an existing opposing, an opposite uh, order or trade that's open, or um, they will only open it if it's losing more than the triggered loss level. That's something that we didn't talk about before, but let's say you buy 1,000 units of your dollar, and you you were supposed to be, let's say you set up your stop loss of 100 pips, take profit of 200 pips, and it's now at 50 pips uh, towards the stop loss. So it's losing 50 pips. Well, that will trigger uh, at the broker level, at whatever rate they, they decide, it will trigger an actual order where they will open up an order for the difference between the 50 pips and the 100 pips. Okay, and they ha it's all computerized systems. They, they, everything there is computerized. There's usually a few people in there. There are a few traders that watch the actual pooling so they know what they need to do. Uh, again, it's a pretty smart industry. There's a lot of money in it. Brokers will only open trades based on the pool trader's requirements. What does that mean? Say, for example, overall, there is... Um, five million units of euro dollar on the buy and seven million units on the sell so the brokers will only open up the two million units uh difference basically and that's how that's how they take both ends so when you think about it, they had seven and five so they get seven plus the five is 14 but in actuality they're only paying spreads to their banks on two that's pretty good that's pretty good ROI. Okay. Now, something to remember. If the broker routes orders directly to the banks, okay, and again, I'm talking about the brokers that have really, really low spreads, like 0.1 and 0.9 pips or something, that, that's just impossible. And if they if they do route their orders directly to the banks, okay they will be bankrupt very fast okay I'm not notice I'm not mentioning any names of any brokers but I can tell you some of the largest brokers on earth uh, they claim that they do not send any uh, they all their orders are directly sent to the banks they would never ever do anything for the euro dollar below the 1.5 or the 1.2 pips because they would simply lose money if their cost is 1.2 pips so they'd be bankrupt really fast okay well demo mode versus real trading mode well most platforms are broker driven so the demo mode is made different with most brokers the demo mode trades are rerouted to different servers or different software, okay, like a different program that handles that sort of order. Well, demo modes, demo mode does not depict real mode, okay. How can you, how can I prove this? Well, it's very simple. If you create, it'd be good if I can spell. If you create a market order, MKT stands for market order, okay. Most platforms will execute at shown rate. So, for example, let's show this right now. Okay, don't forget the rate changes all the time. If you were to do at market, it means that it should it should get filled at whatever the market is, not necessarily what what is quoted. It's right now it's two five one two three. If I, if you were on demo mode, most of the time you will be paying this. Okay. Uh, the Traders Hideout platform is not like that. Everything is routed through the same server, so you would actually get the market fill. Okay, it, it's it's a true demo. Um, and demo trades allow for things that are not allowed with real accounts. So, for example, like we talked about the arbitrage, uh, the hedging, the scalping, and the tick trading. Um, most platforms will not allow that or they'll freeze your account and they'll just they'll just cancel any of the profits that you've made obviously whatever you lost chances are you won't lose if you're doing the arbitrage and the hedging and you know what you're doing and the scalping on on all those delays okay but if you have any losses they'll keep those losses but if you had gains 
they're going to keep those too. <laughs> so remember that. And I don't know if you ever noticed, but if you used any other platforms, if you notice that there's never any issues in demos and it's always just in real trading, okay, you should have the same issues in demo as you do with the trading. So for example, if there was an issue with the closing rate, um, it should be both in the real trading and the demo trading. In demo trading, most of the places, you'll never have any issues. Um, so something that we've noticed when we, um, when I put out the, um, the platform initially, there was a small bug, which obviously is fixed. There was a small bug that sometimes uh, was triggered after um, a, a, a trade went into take profit, but it didn't reach uh, the chaser. If you don't know what the chaser is, have a look at the video. There was a small, there was a small bug. It was actually for for the for the benefit of the trader, but um, it was nevertheless it was still a bug. And the bug was noticeable both in, in the demo and in real trading on two, on two separate accounts, okay? So that is a sign of a platform or a broker that uses a platform that treats everything the same. Okay, now Traders Hideout is not a broker. We route it to brokers, okay? But it's routed the same way. <clears throat> so whatever it is that you get quoted, whatever issues there are in real mode as opposed to demo mode, they're the same thing, okay? Uh, that is something very important. If you're if you're um, trying demo out for uh, any broker platforms out there, then you should really watch out for this. Okay, number seven. This is probably the most the most um, important thing you will ever learn about other brokers. Well, it's not other brokers, it's brokers and other platforms. And I dive into this in the next um, in the next part of the video series. Bad order entry screens. You've you've seen enough of my trades. For those of you who follow me on my on, on the everyday trading that I do on here. And throughout every single time that that I create uh, orders you will see this screen, okay? You will never ever see an order screen like this anywhere on any platform probably in the next two to five years. Why? Because the brokers would lose money if they gave it to you. Here is why, okay? Well, intentionally bad money management. What does that mean? We talked about the rule of 72, lessons one and two and three. We always talk about the capital, watching your capital, the 72 multiplier, the rule of 72. Do you want to see what is your your net gain, your cost, your, your net profit, net loss, uh, expected gain? All these, all these stats in real time, you should have those at your fingertips when you create this trade. So, for example, if I want to create this trade at 50,000 units, I know my my 72 multiplier, I know what it is, okay? That is so important to know. If you show me another platform that has this, I will take my hat off to them and I could pretty much close out this platform because traders will probably use that that one. But I don't think you would see you would see one for for the next few years. Okay? This is really important. You got to have this information when you trade. Otherwise, you're creating we talked about this earlier on in the other in the other video okay if you were in the other video in lesson number three have a look at uh, trading trading 103 we talk about this issue right here so one of the things that we learn is that you gotta have a stop loss no matter what and most platforms it's optional Okay, placing a stop loss is optional. That's bad money management. We talk about two to one TPSL, take profit stop loss ratios. Look at trading 102 video. Okay, you should never ever create an order without a stop loss. This platform will never allow you to create an order without a stop loss. Why? It's bad money management. Not only, sorry, let me rephrase that. It's suicide. Okay. It's financial suicide not to put a stop loss. It means that you know absolutely nothing about trading. 
okay on some broker platform the stop can can only be after the trade is open now that's pretty stupid okay they won't even show you the option so for example here the stop loss is is for you it's already created for you some of them won't even have the stop loss option on here you actually have your take profit stop loss ratios everything is done for you talks to you about your 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 spread it talks to you about your effective stop and your effective ratio all these things are really important okay you need to know that for good money management the other thing is missing uh, essential functionality okay no information about the portfolio impact which we talked about no multiple exits okay we talked about this in lesson 103 when we talked about multi exits you want to capture some of the the profits and then keep the other trades possibly uh, open longer okay no preset for TPSL ratios okay I misspelled that one okay and you need to do the math on your own now why because the more mistakes you make the better the more money the brokers will make okay and there's no consideration for spreads like we talked about the effect of stop loss and so on and so forth okay and uh, they, they just won't put that there because that's how they make their money okay so uh, to wrap things up I'm, I'd like to talk about what's uh, in the next upcoming videos uh, probably this is uh, I'm sure this video is was very enlightening and very uh, eye-opening for you but the next one is going to be this whole series the next four videos are really really powerful I'll be talking about platforms that guarantee your losses okay and I'll show you the differences between the traders hideout platform and other platforms um, there is reasons why I created this platform I'm just I said this in the beginning of the video I'm just I was sick and tired of the games that brokers played and part of the brokers are the platform just because you get a platform for free it doesn't mean um, you know there's all these software that you can download it doesn't mean that the brokers don't have a plug-in they all do you know go to any broker and see we got MetaTrader plugin well, guess what? MetaTrader is a great program. I'm not knocking it out. I'm knocking out the the plugin, because the plugin is the brain that tells the that tells that software how to operate. Okay, and all the games are at the broker level. So MetaTrader, I, again, I'm not knocking it off. It's a great program. Okay, but you could have all your technical analysis in there. You could do all the setups that you want. You know, I'm not here to promote. Uh, MT or, or anything yeah but just so, so you understand that uh, you really don't have control although it looks like it you know you downloaded the software that's great yeah you downloaded the software but if you want to if you want to use this one broker it's going to act in one way and use another broker will act differently well why is that because it's the plugins and it's all these things that we talked about until now that are in that plugin or are connected the, the plugin is connected to that broker and their their rules and their features okay so the next uh, the next part is going to be very very interesting and obviously you know since I created my own platform I have a fair bit of knowledge of what goes into a platform um, the following part I'll take I'll take you through the things that people as traders as I meet traders all over the world I find that people just don't learn Okay, just don't learn from mistakes and they keep on doing the same thing over and the wrong things over and over and over again and why they lose money 80% or more of the time then I'll talk about the wrong tools for for actual trading okay and I said I'll give you an example so I'll, I'll give this example right now for example I don't know if you know let's bring this up okay I will do a, a special video uh, just on this I, I might even do that today we'll see uh, but let's bring up the chart for the euro dollar okay and we're gonna take something that is is very very common for people to look for okay and I'll talk to you about the mindset now I, like I said before I've been trading since 1988 so I know how the stock market works and I know how Forex works so here's the problem okay we got this chart here I'll, I'll bring up um, 100 a sample of 100 now this is a 15 minute chart 
And what I want to talk to you about is pivot points. Now, for those who don't who don't know what pivot points are, and for those who do, this will this is probably going to be very enlightening for you. The whole idea of pivot points came back came from the stock market, where the floor traders had these checkpoints to find whether things are either going to go down lower or going to go higher. So they set up these pivot points. They set up these checkpoints for the day. So anything under 30 minutes, so if we're using 5 minute, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minute uh, charts, all the pivot points are based on the um, on previous day's data, okay, the high low close, HLC. Now the problem with that is that, well, if I'm short trading, if I'm doing scalping or I'm doing a, an intraday, say I'm doing a uh, a trade now for for the next half an hour let's take a look right now okay I got this thing right here I might want to do right now on a 15 minute chart I want to look at the next one hour probably and you know hopefully gain about uh, I don't know 15 pips or whatever now the problem is when I turn on now on this platform it's different okay the way that the sample works here notice we got this s1 here okay and there's the S1 and S2, okay, R1 and R2, okay. They're actually based on a sample of this type of chart, okay. Why? Because you should not be using something that is from yesterday. The reason why it was done that way for, for stocks is because every day is reset, right? They close the markets in the afternoon, they go to sleep, they come back in the morning, so they need some checkpoint to know what is expected for that day. Well, Forex is completely fluid, okay? It's continuous, 24-5. There is no breaks. So, and I'll, I'll, I'll take this one step further. If you do the one-hour chart, okay, if you do normal pivot points, they're based on one week. So, for example, if you were to check right now pivot points for the euro dollar and pretty much all the platforms the common mistake is to show you well right now it would show you uh, everything for last week okay now the close would be right because it's still in the sample but the low may not be right for example how do we know this if we take a look at the sample here okay the low would be around this area okay and if, there, if it was one week, chances are it's going to be around this area. So chances are the S2 is going to be around this. Now that's a problem because if I'm trading one hour time frames, I don't need one week of, of data. Okay, it's completely wrong. That's like 100, a sample is 100. It's completely inconsistent. I do suggest you take a look at the video I'll be making. I will probably make it right after this. Okay, so that's just a sample of uh, the kind of things that uh, the technical analysis, which is wrong information or it's inconsistent or it's bad information for you. Okay, so um, I hope uh, you enjoyed this, uh, this video and I'd love to see your comments. You know, thumbs up is good and uh, we'll see you in the next part. This is Mike Mather for Traders Hideout. May the profits be with you. Have a great one.